Hello, I'm Greg, and I'm from Lofty Pursuits, and we make hard candy, and today we're going to make little yellow fish. These little yellow fish are inspired by Douglas Adams, the writer of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. In The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, he mentions these really cool fish called Babel fish. They're translators. You stick them in your ear, and what you hear, you can understand, even if you don't speak the language. It created a universal way for everyone to communicate. Unfortunately, these are just candy, so please don't stick them in your ear. We used to make these candies before, but we had a roller that only made one set at a time. In other words, the one you're seeing here makes two rows of fish. The one we had before only made one. This meant we made half as many in the same time, and that made it difficult to produce. So we discontinued it. Well, we're bringing them back, and we're bringing them back in a new flavor. The new flavor is lemon meringue pie, a flavor we've never done before. Our hot sugar is heated, it's already colored and flavored, and it's up to 310 degrees. We're going to pour it on our candy cooling table, a steel jacketed water cooled table, that'll drop the temperature rapidly. Since it's a lemon meringue pie, it needs to have a little acid cut to it, otherwise it won't be like a lemon. It already has the lemon oil in the candy, but the acid we have to put in separately, and that's what this white powder is. It's pure citric acid, and when it folds into the candy, it'll give that candy just a little tart that'll make the pie's flavor seem convincing. I grew up in Brooklyn. And I spent many a summer at a great science summer camp in Hawley, Pennsylvania called Camp Watanka. It's still there, I think. And for some reason, most of their counselors were British. The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy hadn't yet been released in the United States, but it had been released in Britain. It was based off a radio drama that Douglas Adams had written the year before. And when it was in England, it was very, very popular there, and my camp counselors brought a copy over. And it got passed between the cabins, and we all read it. I was quite surprised to find when I got back to Brooklyn that Douglas Adams was doing an autograph session in Manhattan. It ends up he was signing contracts for the American edition, and nobody really knew him. You see, he was a BBC script writer. He wasn't an author. So I went to his autograph session, and I think there were 12 of us there. He didn't know what to do with an autograph session. We hung around, we talk, he bought us pizza. And then we uh, asked the question, how did you come up with The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? The sugar is now a perfect clay consistency and we put it through the rollers to make our little Babel fish. So there we are, in a science fiction store in Manhattan called Forbidden Planet on the corner of 8th and Broadway. It's still in business a few blocks up Broadway, but back then they had lots of cool authors showing up, and Douglas Adams was one of them, and we asked him, how did you come up with The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? He stared at the ceiling for a moment, and I'm not sure whether he was trying to come up with a fun story, or he was trying to decide if he wanted to share the real story with us. But this is what he told us. He was 18 and he was hiking across Europe, hitchhiking across Europe, but mostly hiking because nobody was picking him up. And he was running out of money, he didn't have a lot of money to begin with, and it's late at night and he's coming to this little town because he was mostly going through farmland it seems. And he ends up in this town, he asks for directions, I think to buy groceries, and after a few minutes of confusion he realizes he's speaking to somebody who's both deaf and mute. And this confused him, but he figured there's one guy in every town and he heads into town further and finds another person who's also deaf and mute. He hits a third person who's also deaf and mute, it appears. And after four of these people, he goes to a street vendor, figuring he can talk to them, and they're deaf and mute. But he's selling booze, he buys a bottle, and he leaves town immediately. He finds a comfy haystack, and he climbs up on it and lays on it, stares at the stars, and enjoys his beverage, and he thinks, I wonder if there's a Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, and I wonder if it's as bad as this thing. The next morning he wakes up, and he goes back into town, and he sees what he couldn't see in the dark, a giant banner off over the town advertising a convention for people who were deaf and mute. At that moment, he told us, he realized he needed to get back to England. If you haven't had a chance to read these books, you really need to. There are five books in the trilogy, and they're all light reading and a whole lot of fun. Douglas Adams passed away of a heart attack at age 49 on May 11th, 2001. 
and on May 25th his fans had a wake for him, and they decided to make this an annual tradition, and because you needed to know where your towel was in the books, you'll get it if you read the books, they decided to call it Towel Day, and for Towel Day 2019 we're reintroducing our Babelfish candy, but with a new flavor, lemon meringue pie. You can find out more about this event at TowelDay.org. This type of candy is known as drops, and you'll see why when we break them apart. If you think the folks here at Lofty Pursuits are hoopy fruits and you want to try our candy for yourself, you can order it at www.pd.net. You can also come to our store and visit us in person. We're right off the Thomasville Road exit of I-10 in Tallahassee, Florida. We even have the books I had autographed back then on display in our party room so you can see them in person. If you like this video, please subscribe here and click alerts here on YouTube. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We do updates occasionally about our candy. And if you sign up for our email list at www.pd.net, you'll find out about what's coming out before everyone else does. Thank you for watching.